All right, Buju everyone. My name is Misha Leffler. Welcome to the Indigenous Perspectives on Skin Cancer webinar on Tuesday, May 25th. We are very grateful to have you all here. I am the Senior Program Cancer Specialist or Senior Program Specialist for the Cancer Equity Team here at ACAF. I am an enrolled member of the Bay Mills Ojibwe Indian Community and also a Blackfeet descendant. I, again, I'm very thankful to have you all here and have our wonderful guest speakers. Um, so for those who don't know, oops, went too far. The American Indian A Cancer Foundation is a national nonprofit organization established to address the tremendous cancer inequities faced by American Indian and Alaska Natives. Our mission is to eliminate cancer burdens on American Indian and Alaska Native people through education, improved access to prevention, early detection, treatment, and survivor support. And again, today we are very thankful that you are all here to join us. So I am joined by Bobby McWilliams Weasley, Regina I oh my goodness, I'm going to say this wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. Itoate. Itoate, there we go. And then Suzanne Walsh. Um, so Bobby is a citizen of the Osage Nation and an undergraduate student at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Regina is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and an assistant professor of health promotion in the College of Public Health at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And Suzanne Walsh is an elder of the Osage Nation and a mother to nine children, as well as a grateful cancer survivor. We are so thankful to have all of you here today to talk about skin cancer during May, which is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So I am going to turn it over to you all now and stop sharing my screen and you're welcome to introduce yourselves and share yours as well. I do also wanna to mention to attendees and people watching through um, Facebook that you are welcome to chat us on either Zoom or Facebook. Let us know if you have any questions or just feel free to reach out and let us know what, you, what some of your thoughts are. And I will be checking those. And yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Misha. We are really grateful to be here and we were absolutely thrilled when you contacted us after um, reading Bobby's paper um, that was in the American Medical Association Journal for Ethics. Um, and I would like to start just by apologizing for speaking before my elders and um, expressing all of our gratitude for this opportunity to share our stories with you and to talk about skin cancer in the American Indian population. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and thank you, Misha, for the nice introduction. Um, so um, that was actually planned as our first slide, and, and I like yours better. So thank you for introducing us. Um, but I'll just say I'm joined. I'm Regina Ilowate with the hard last name to pronounce. <laughs> um, and I'm joined by Suzanne Walsh and Bobby McWilliams Leasley today. And here's our agenda so that you kind of have an idea of what we'll be talking about. We'll start off just sharing our own personal introductions, um, who we are, where we're from, whatever else um, that may be relevant to our stories. And then share, I'll share a brief introduction to the Youth Enjoy Science YES program um, with Bobby's support. Um, and she's a part of the YES program as well. And then we'll share uh, some some facts about American Indians and skin cancer, um, most of which are facts that we shared with students and participants involved in the YES program. Um, and then we'll share Suzanne's story both through just verbal narrative and visual narrative and portraiture that, um, that Bobby's uh, created in partnership with Suzanne and then we'll take questions and answers. And please, as Misha said, please feel free to um, chime in with questions, unmute yourself, ask, you know, at any point we're happy to take questions or um, hear comments or thoughts or reflections as we work through this. So yes, we do have that planned for the end of our agenda, but at any point we welcome questions and comments. So please don't hesitate to chat in the chat box or just uh, unmute and let us know what your thoughts are or questions. So I'm going to hand this over to Suzanne Walsh, but I, I just want to say um, that I'm incredibly grateful for not only um, being able to work with Bobby over the last few years 
but also to have been able to get to know her mom who has influenced me and my life in multiple ways, really, really significant ways. Um, uh, not only was it her story that brought me to, uh, to check my own self for skin cancer and go to a dermatologist and, and actually find some precancerous spots that needed to be removed and have been removed. Um, that was all as a result of her story and, and Bobby sharing that in a research presentation. Um, so that's happened actually twice now since that first time that uh, your story was shared, Suzanne. So, so um, I'm sure you're touching and saving lives um, all over, not just mine, but, but I personally am incredibly grateful for your story and how it's changed my life in that way. And in, in many others, I just really admire you and look up to you as a, a mother and, um, and as a inspiration for cancer survivors. So um, I have actually not been able to meet Suzanne in person yet, but we've known each other for years. So I feel, I feel like I have, um, and I look forward to the day that I get to return to Oklahoma and, and spend time together. And um, I'm just grateful for this opportunity for all of us to be together today and I will pass it over to Suzanne to introduce herself and uh, share a little bit about who she is and where she's from and how, how she got involved and wrapped up with us <laughs> and all this cancer work to begin with. <laughs> Thank you, <Dana. laughs> Okay. Sorry. You can just start with when you were a baby. My name is Suzanne Walsh and I'm a member of the Osage Indian tribe, uh, Native American. And I'm happy to do all this about skin cancer. I was told that I had skin cancer uh, quite a few years ago. And I was very, very surprised because I didn't think that being having dark skin that I would ever get skin cancer. So it was a big surprise to me. And when I first went to the doctor, I didn't really believe him. I just didn't think this would happen. So I went to another one that I liked very well. He had small hands and, and uh, was a very wonderful person. And I thought, gosh, he could really do surgery with those little hands. He, he wouldn't, uh, maybe he wouldn't have a big scar if he had to have cancer removed. So I had quite a few things removed at the time. And, um, but as I started out as a child, my mother had me in the sun. She thought it was good for me. And my legs had turned almost black from being in the sun. And from there, I swam a lot and loved it. And I still love to get in the pool and swim. And I used to dive. I don't dive anymore. I was diving to try out for the Olympics. And my parents said it was just too much. I was a sophomore in high school and they said that all that practice was too much. So I stopped diving and uh, still do it once in a while, but now I mostly swim and I still love swimming and I still love the sun. And I've had cancer removed all over my body, my face, legs, arms, everywhere. And uh, sometimes I still get spots and I just had my foot done about a year ago and they removed cancer from my foot and they didn't get it all this time, which they, which was very unusual. So I had to go back and have that all redone. So I was very disappointed then, but I, I still love to be outside and I would tell all the children to go outside, play, have fun. Don't, don't stay inside because of the sun. Go out and wear a t-shirt put sunscreen on, have a good time. So I would like to, everybody to know that I think children should be out playing, not inside all the time. So now I'm going to ask Bobby what she thinks. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Bobby McWilliam Leesley, and um, I am... I work for the Youth and Joy Science Pro Project and I've been doing it for probably almost three years now. And I've met very, very wonderful people along the way. Um, and we presented at um, the Nebraska Science Fair and we presented um, in um, North Dakota as well. 
Um, and I just want to say how much it's it's meant to me and also to be able to write the story, the Suzanne story and share her story. Um, and then I also have done a lot of artwork based around her story and um, working with the YES program. And through through pre presenting and doing her story, I found out how how much that the um, Native American youth were really, really engaged and involved in it. Um, and when we presented in South Sioux City, um, a lot of the Native children had their blankets on and they came up to the paintings and they really, really looked them over really good. It, it really resonated with them. And then the one where um, Suzanne had her quilt on, it just resonates to how to protect yourself um, from the sun and from the dangers of um, smoking, drinking, and anything negative that that um, you have in your life. So um, it's just been a pleasure for me to present and to write the story and to work with Gina. It's just been an amazing three years. And I just want to say how much I loved it. And um, that's that's about it, I guess, unless everybody has questions for me. Let's see. And I like to say how much I like to continue to work with the YES program and put our information out there because because looking at the Native American youth and the high school students straight on really let us know how much it really affects them and how much they even filled out on the questionnaire that we asked them and questions that we asked them if this has helped them and they said yes it does and that they didn't know that Native Americans could get skin cancer and how much how much more they're going to be careful and use sunscreen and everything when they go out in the sun. And we've also worked, and this is also with Gina, together we worked with um, the Buckskin Buddies. And that was the um, teenage and high school Native American youth. And during that, we made um, special projects with little stuffed animals. And um, a lot of those were Native American symbols. Like I did the spider on mine. And some of them did like the um, buffalo. And the, they all shared their stories when they held up their buskskin buggy and told all about what it means to them too. And that was through the NICE program. So I just want to say how much I've loved being part of all of, um, all of the Native American programs and how much I've loved it and that I've loved working with Gina. I love working with you, Bobby. <laughs> it's funny because you said it's been a good three years, and I thought the same thing. Like, it's we're not done. We're not done. Yeah, we're not done. <laughs> we have a lot of work left to do. But yeah. yes. <laughs> Shall I transition into to another slide, Bobby? Are you sure? Sure. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So let's see. Um, thank you, Bobby and Suzanne, both for, for sharing your introductions. Um, I'm, I would absolutely agree with Bobby that it has been an amazing three years, and I've just loved working with both of you so much and learned so much from both of you. Um, thank and you. it's probably saved my life, which is really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. But also so much has just been, um, you know, things I've learned just in general about life and being a human, a good human being and, and a good student and a good teacher, a good mentor, um, good scientist. So artists yeah. even. Um, you do all those well. <laughs> what's that? I said you do all those wonderfully. I, think, I try, I keep learning. But I <laughs> honestly, like this has just been such an amazing project to work on and I, I feel like it's a true partnership and collaboration and we've all learned so much from each other and, and I, I'm excited for it to continue. Um, but just to give a little more background about uh, who I am and um, where I'm from, I, I, we all had a few pictures of our family members and, um, and I included some. So the top left is my mom and my dad and my grandmother um, who are all uh, Cherokee and I'm a citizen of Cherokee Nation myself. 
and also a graduate of the University of Nebraska Medical Center where I studied preventive and societal medicine um, and which is now where I get to work with the YES program as a principal investigator on that uh, National Institutes for, for Health um, Research Education program. And then, so that's me graduating in the top right corner, <laughs> wearing my mother's <laughs> bolo tie that gave me a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see my, my little immediate family there at the bottom right, um, my dog, Johnny, and my son, Gaiska, and my husband, Inyaki. And my husband's Basque, he's from, um, he's from Northern Spain. The, he's in, indigenous to Spain. So Gaiska is a difficult name for people and so is Ilowate, <laughs> but they're both Basque names. Um, and, and then you see a picture of Bobby and Aislinn, our program manager for the YES program, who's done an incredible amount of work with us to make these, these programs a success and, um, and our presentations and things like this. She's just an amazing support. Um, and inspiration. And she's also a PhD student in, in our College of Public Health. Um, and so one thing that Bobby didn't mention is that she's also, a, she's an art major, but also studies Native American studies, which is how we met when I was teaching Native American studies, because um, I too was a student of, of Native American studies originally. So I've studied psychology, preventive and societal medicine, Christian spirituality, um, Native studies, maternal and child health, uh, and all of that seems to kind of just come together really well when we are talking about cancer prevention, education, research, and treatment. So we're excited to share a little more with you all today. So the little icons you see on the bottom are schools that I've attended and places that I've worked as well. So I started in Arizona, which is where I am now, even though I work for University of Nebraska, um, and also studied at Creighton and UNO University of Arizona, and now work and had studied at UNMC. And then I used to teach at Institute for American Indian Arts uh, and am really involved in art-based research, which is one of the connections that Bobby and I have had. Um, so we're gonna share with you, and Bobby, chime in um, if, as, you, as, you, as things arise or you have thoughts to share, um, but we're gonna share a little bit about the YES program, which YES stands for Youth Enjoy Science. Um, it's a program funded by the National Cancer Institute. Um, the image that you see was done by Donnell Keeler. He's a Lakota uh, artist, um, Honka artist, and um, that is our kind of visual mission statement um, for our program. And I work along with uh, two other PIs, Maurice Godfrey, Joyce Solheim, and our program manager, Aislinn Rookwood, who you just saw a picture of and many students and many mentors and many teachers. Yes, this is just a beautiful um, picture there. And on our Yes teachers, we have the words, um, they're gray t-shirts with Yes written on the front. And then this beautiful picture on the back of the shirt. So it's just, a, it's, it's just beautiful done by the artist and we're very proud to wear it when we wear it. So. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, and you'll see that popping up in the images and portraits as well as we move through this. Um, and the, the YES program really, um, the aim of it is to support Native American students in, uh, in research, cancer research experiences and opportunities. So we do that in a bunch of different ways. Um, we have YES clubs that work with middle school and high school students, um, STEAM camp, which is science, tech, uh, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And then we also have a week long or two week long, depending on the summer, um, whoops, WISH program, which uh, explores the health professions um, in the dorms, on campus, and um, introduces students to different health profession, professions in cancer research. And then we have cancer research internships, which is um, what, what Bobby's been doing, uh, working with me and many others, uh, artists and academics, um, and those are paid internships and then and lab experiences too. And then we also have a, a portion of our program that does community engagement and outreach. So we'll share some of that with you today. This is kind of what it looks like. You could either be in a lab, there's Bobby in the garden. We had an indigenous garden that we planted at UNO, um, public health fairs or presenting academic research. There's Bobby again on the lower left presenting uh, Suzanne's story at a, a research forum. 
And we, we grew up corn, beans, and squash in the garden. <laughs> yeah. Lots of other stuff. So that's a big corn stalk. They, they got to be like, I'd say about almost between 12 and 18 foot high. They were really big that year. Wow. Yeah. They had a really successful garden. And that was a, a, a really nice. We, we made so, the braids with them to the, you know. Sweetgrass. The- yes, we did sweetgrass grip braids and. And we made a lot of connections between our, our health and wellness and cancer prevention and, um, and healthy diets or, you know, indigenous diets and the importance of that. So a lot of students made recipes and we had a harvest day. It was, that was a fun project. So we've been involved in all kinds of different projects through YES, um, and including Buckskin Buddies, which was the one Bobby mentioned. Do you want to point out your piece there, Bobby? Yeah, the, it's this one here. Can you see when I'm pointing the second one? Second one it's, to the left. Yeah, yeah that one. with the spider on it. The, the spider, because that was big in the Osage stories and the Osage, um, the Osages have a lot, like a lot of their stories revolve around the spider and the protection of the spider and stuff. So I decided to do the spider for, for, for mine. It's beautiful. And, and we displayed these then in the library at the university there to share, to share stories about health and wellness um, and resources about cancer prevention. Um, so that's the display that you see behind the picture of a lot of our participants in this project. <laughs> these are some of our uh, cancer research interns. There's Bobby. <laughs> And our cancer research interns either work in the College of Public Health, which is the top picture, or in the Buffett Cancer Center, um, doing more like wet lab, lab, lab work. Um, from the public health perspective, we work a lot more with community engagement out in the community, working with people like we got to work with Suzanne. And ultimately, the aim of the overall aim of the program is to promote our you know workforce development and have more Indigenous peoples, Native peoples working. Um, in health careers, in cancer research, in health professions. And we do that by working with all different sectors across the community, educators, scientists, community leaders, um, and specialists, and American Indian Cancer Foundation now, thank you. But these are some descriptions of what some of our interns have done in the program. And I'm just gonna point out Bobby's um, for today, but we will share the slide presentation if anyone's interested in, in uh, learning more about different opportunities. But Bobby did this uh, case study investigating the experience of living with skin cancer. And I guess I should also note that another student did study melanoma, but more on the um, lab side in the Cancer Buffett, Buffett Cancer Center doing, um, doing lab studies to explore or investigate melanoma. And Bobby's work was done through the College of Public Health in, in a more community engaged art based research uh, approach. And then Bobby, you'll see Bobby here presenting at we have a cancer biology and you day where we invite um, hundreds of students to learn about cancer and this one in particular was focused on skin cancer, breast cancer and skin cancer. So as part of that uh, project Bobby uh, shared the story of Suzanne, her mother and her portraiture. Do you want to share anything about that, Bobby? Um, yes, I'd just like to say on that day, um, this is where I was saying where the students got really engaged and we had invited them up to come close up to the paintings after that we spoke. And I and it just um, resonated how really, really involved and engaged all the students were when they came up and and were just um, had their blankets on and were really relating to the quilt and the Suzanne story and just asking lots of questions and being really engaged with the whole process. So I just found that just amazing. And they all said how much that they learned and that they would be more careful and cover up. And, you know, and it was really good for them to know that, you know, that they need to, even with, um, Native American um, skin, you can still get sunburnt. You know, these things um, still happen so that they should wear their lotion and hats and clothing and do everything they can to cover themselves up. So it was just an amazing day. It was, and, and Suzanne, I remember that the students said that they were left 
just feeling your joy and, and energy for life and um, how much they appreciated that and how much they, they realized that, you know, that you can get skin cancer and still live a really fulfilled, happy life and it can be treated. So, so often, you know, Bobby and I have done other studies specific to cancer where it seems so um, fatal, like cancer is equal to death, but that's not, not always the case. And that was one really important thing that the students recognize from your story is, is how much beautiful, strong, vibrant life <laughs> there is um, for people living with cancer. Thank you, Jania. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah, the students were, it was really, really nice to hear all of their reflections um, on what they got out of just looking at and, and being with you through the portraiture. That visual narrative was really powerful. So on that day, we shared um, fact sheets with the students like this that talked about different types of skin cancer. Um, I'll be sharing this PowerPoint, so I'm going to kind of breeze through these things, but just to give people an idea of what we shared with the students. Um, we also shared these, um, like what to look for to identify what that looks like, skin cancer, what might be a concern. Um, and so these were these are things that can can help students uh, encourage encourage anyone really to check their skin and keep checking their skin um, and see a dermatologist or a skin doctor um, if if there is anything that doesn't look normal. So we shared that. We also shared this um, list of infographic uh, kind of themes and had students create infographics around these themes, um, and that was pretty fun. But the truth of the matter is that what they found most exciting and what they learned most from, according to our evaluations, was Bobby's presentation of Suzanne's story and the portraiture. So that was the most powerful part of the whole day. And I should, should also mention that they did do work with um, these sun beads that um, they put sunblock on or put an umbrella over them to see how much UV radiation they were getting. So there was hands-on experiments as well. Um, and all of that I put in our references can be found through the science takeout kit. So all of these, these resources um, can be found through science takeout. Um, so if anyone's interested in accessing those, let me know. And it's also in our PowerPoint um, references. But, but the, most, the most powerful part of the day was, was um, hearing about uh, Suzanne's story and experiencing and seeing and spending time with just kind of beholding Suzanne's portraits. And when the science takeout kits are not culturally uh, tailored to native peoples. So I'm just gonna share a few um, specific facts that we've found from the literature. Bobby's done extensive work in her. She's also an honors student in, in the college and did an honors thesis um, specific to American Indians and skin cancer. So here's some of the things that we've found through the literature that 10% of native peoples believe um, that we don't develop skin cancer. And yet 90% have been sunburned at least once. So 90% have had that skin redness or even peeling, 82%. 10% report using sunscreen regularly on their bodies. And 7.5% of Native Americans report ever having a skin exam at all. And that's where I think Suzanne's story can, can really make a difference because it did just for me, you know, even just one person. Um, but, but then I went and had a skin exam because I was concerned about something that just didn't look normal after hearing her story. And I had a, a spot removed from my back and now I've had another one from my leg removed. I mean, it says 2.5% actually um, have those skin exams within Indian Health Service clinics. Sometimes that's with regular family physician. Um, I think this data was 1.5% actually see a dermatologist. Um, but I know that at Phoenix Indian Medical Center, there is a dermatologist there. And I've even asked that dermatologist, well, really, how much work do you have with Native peoples? And he said, you'd be surprised how many Native people do get skin cancer. Um, so thought that was an interesting fact. And, and Native people have the second or third highest rate of melanoma. And Native Americans are 38% less likely than that's non-Hispanic whites, NHW, to have high sun protective scores. 
So some protective scores re refers to like what Suzanne was talking about, wear sunscreen, cover yourself, you know, stay in the shade, those kinds of protective factors that keep us safe from the sun so we can still enjoy it, being outdoors. And natives tend to lack an understanding of really what causes skin cancer. So where it's coming from and, um, and how, that, how it develops. Um, and, and a large part of, of our understanding about who gets skin cancer and why we get it um, comes, comes from um, not really being, I guess, how do I explain this? Um, from not having a history of education around these things. So not having this tailored education specific to Native Americans, or even not understanding our history in general of colonization and what's happened over time and changes to uh, skin color. So just ethnically being Native American does not mean that everyone who's Native American has really dark skin color either. So those are just things to be aware of. Um, so it's, it's just, better not to group group all, as we all know, because we all uh, represent and come from different tribes and families and communities and histories um, that, that, we, that we recognize ourselves as individuals with our own stories and lived experiences. Like Suzanne has growing up, just loving the outdoors and swimming so much and being out in the sun and diving. And so these, these things influence our um, risk for skin cancer, regardless of of our tribal affiliation. And now I'm gonna hand it back over to Suzanne and Bobby to share, uh, to share Suzanne, uh, Suzanne's story and Bobby's uh, research project, the case study. <laughs> okay, this was a, um, a picture that I took um, in North Kansas City when I met my mom and um, she has a quilt, she's wearing a quilt with her nine children's names printed on it. You can't see the quilt really um, close, but that's what it, it was. Um, there was a lady in Canada who made this quilt for my mom and she just wrapped up in it, showing how much she loves it and her nine children. And here you could see that she's, um, oh, I was just gonna say that you could see how all of, um, Com her complexion, her faces and everything because she never stopped loving the sun and going out in the sun. Yeah. And Bobby did a portrait uh, of this picture itself actually as part of her study. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if the pictures aren't showing up. Are, can, you, can you see the pictures here? Um, just under the abstract, but yeah, I think they're all showing throughout um, the rest of the slides, but okay. the one on the ab abstract shows that picture. Um, but the rest of them, like the visual data and stuff are in your slides to come. And um, yeah. But the presentation, do you want to share a little bit, Bobby, about where you, what this poster was created for and where you shared it? Yeah, this is the poster that I shared um, in um, North Dakota, and it was um, for a Native American presentation there, and it was a call for posters. So that was, I think, two years ago in North Dakota that I went there, and I shared this um, poster of my mom going from the time that she was a child and went out in the sun and then it goes on to talk about how um, when she was growing up, there was people did not wear sunscreen. And I don't think people knew the dangers of the sun as much as they do now. Her mother would wear her own hat out in the sun because she didn't really care for the sun herself. But from the time that my mom was a little baby, she was just put out in the sun and then she loved to swim. So she wore out all her bathing suits swimming as a child. And then she just never stopped swimming, you know, throughout her whole life. And then she trained for the Olympics and swam then. And then she lifeguarded most of her adult life. Um, and then she actually was diagnosed with skin cancer when she was 56 years old. And she was um, very surprised because she it was something that she thought having olive 
skin tone that she'd never get cancer. So she, when she was diagnosed with skin cancer, the, the doctor noticed it on her back and he said, what is this? And then he had to send it off to the lab. And it came back that it was skin cancer. And since then she's had several, like 30 at a time, even 30 something at a time going in and getting skin cancers removed. Um, so she's had a, a great deal of skin cancer. Um, but as you were saying before, she's never given up on her, her life and always had a positive attitude about it. And now she's teaching now she's teaching Native Americans to cover up so they don't have to go through the same experiences she's had with the sun. So that was mostly what the presentation was about. And then it told a little bit about each kind of cancer as well. So thanks, Bobby. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry the pictures aren't coming up, but we do show them as we, we can kind of move through them because I think we've included them in the presentation. So I'll move forward. Like. Mm -hmm. So these are quotes from the interviews that Bobby did with Suzanne. And Bobby, how many interviews have it, you? It was eight total interviews. Um, it was the initial interview. And then, then we had eight interviews total, um, including the one that's including the one that I just did for the honors thesis project it was eight altogether. <laughs> and, and Bobby painted this portrait from a photograph of Suzanne when she was young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they and thought you want to share, Suzanne? What's that? Oh, I was just wondering if what's your mom thinking as she sees reflect <laughs> on this? I think Bobby did a good job of, <laughs> of doing this. <laughs> And it's very all very true. I don't remember suntan lotion at all. When I got to be in high school, we used iodine baby oil, just like it says here, and just fried. But we all loved it. All my friends, everybody went in the sun, went to the beach in Chicago, Lake Michigan. So we were in the sun all the time. And and now when you go out to you still go to the pool, right? Yes, I do, Gina. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, what's different now? Well, I use some lotion now, which I didn't use before. I use lotion. And I don't cover up with a shirt or anything. I, I really, I want to be tan. I always wanted to be tan, but I want it to be even. So I use lotion and I don't... Um, have a shirt on or anything anymore. Um, and I want to just add to that. It's not prolonged. I mean, when we were kids, we can remember being out and or being out all day, like from noon all the way until <laughs> the sun went down. But now I think, what did the dermatologist say? 20 minutes at a time, maybe yeah, not that. like 20 minutes and then come in and then go back, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. 20 minutes. <laughs> and then we have some photographs too yeah my skin's pretty bad we're really resilient <laughs> well the melanoma doesn't really look like this it was a tiny little shape like a pencil like the end of a pencil an eraser and uh, it was so shiny black I couldn't believe it so I asked the doctor I said what is this and he said we better check that and, and uh, biopsy it so they did and it was melanoma but I noticed it, it was just a strange dark black it was totally black and very very shiny I said this is unusual but that was melanoma yeah, and then this picture was taken, I think, after you had surgery uh -huh. to, to take it out. But but yeah, that's how they noticed it by the shiny black pencil head at uh -huh. the end of a pencil. Yes. How did you end up noticing it? How could what? How did you how did you find the spot? 
Oh, it was so different. It was on my arm and it was just so different. I couldn't believe it. So I asked him and I had been going to the to dermatologist for a long, long time, but this was so different. I said, what is this? And, the, and he looked very surprised and he said, well, we'll biopsy it. And that, that was melanoma. And for people who haven't heard of biopsying, what, is, what, hap what happens when they biopsy it? They take a little part of your skin where the, where uh, like where the black was, they took that and uh, put it in a little, little tiny pill box looking thing, pill, pill holder, and sent it out to be biopsied, and it came and then it comes back to them and it, it was positive melanoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this picture is this after it was removed. Yes, it was. Yes. And yeah, then they, the, they had to uh, cut quite a bit out because they wanted to get it all. And they did. Yeah. They got it all. So I was very lucky. Yes. So this is another quote of yours that I, that I love that's encouraging. Oh, thank you, Gina. I feel that way. I really have been fortunate, very fortunate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I know this was one of the portraits where the students really, you know, they see your smile and they just feel like, okay, you know, <laughs> there is, you know, people, people can smile. People who get, have cancer or are living with cancer can smile. And yes, yes, it's not and the it's end of Let's take care of it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's so good to hear too that it can be removed um, and that we can carry on. Yes, yes, for sure. It's just a matter of finding it, right? De seeing yes. it, detecting it, and then going to the doctor. Yes, yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh, there's another. <laughs> there, this is you wearing your yes t shirt. Yes, <laughs> oh, fun. That's fun. <laughs> I love to have fun, and that's a fun T-shirt. <laughs> Bobby, do you want to share anything about the portraits? Oh, um, th that's what I was um, trying to. To um, I named this portrait "Smiling Sue" because she's always smiling, you know, even through all that she's been through, and. Um, and she was so proud to wear her yes t-shirt when I brought that to her and she even wore it to her dermatologist. <laughs> so I just wanted to have a, a picture painted with her with her yes t-shirt. And on this one, you could even see the bandaid from one of the scars where mm -hmm. she, you know, um, cause she was constantly getting those removed. So, so that's why that was there. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. I think that it was good for the students to see the Band-Aid and the smile. Oh, <laughs> oh that's good. <laughs> okay, very healing. <laughs> oh, and then these are your newer, newer watercolor portraits. Yeah, I'm in a, was in a watercolor this last semester and we used a thing called Yopo paper, Yopo paper where the, um, where the paint will just sit on top of the uh, on top of the picture. And so I wanted to try a couple of portraits using the Yupo paper. And this one, this one here was from my mom's uh, picture photograph she sent me of her foot um, after it had had the surgery. So I tried this one on the watercolor with the Yupo paper. Suzanne, was this after the, the first surgery or the, the follow up? The follow up, the follow up one. And how's your foot doing now? It's doing fine. It's it's doing. I have a lot of arthritis in my feet and all over, but it, as far as the healing, it it healed. It's it's fine. Good. It's doing very well. Thank you. How I mean, when they when they when skin cancers are removed in general, what's the what is the like recovery time or what does that healing process look like? Well, with your feet, it takes longest because it's further from the heart, but your face and chest and upper arms don't take as long as your feet do because when, every, any, when it's close to your heart, it heals better. 
So your feet, I gosh, it was probably about four or five weeks. And then it wasn't, it still hurt. It wasn't healing. And so I went back and that's the first time that it, that ever happened that they didn't get it all. They didn't get all the cancer. It was squamous cancer, cancer, the second stage. And uh, it wasn't just basal, basal cell, it was squamous. And they got it the second time though. It's okay now. And how often do you go back to the dermatologist? Every three months. Mm -hmm. So things can change significantly in a matter of months. Yes, they can. Absolutely, yes. And then if there, you have a ble if I have a bleeding spot, I, I call them and I go in for that because when it's bleeding, that's basal cell usually. And if it bleeds, you have to take care of it. It won't heal. Cancer won't heal by itself. You have to have something done. So I go in and they use and they kind of scrape it or burn like a burning and they usually get it all. well they've always gotten it all except for my foot that time yeah but now they've got it all yes yeah but if i have a spot that's bleeding i call them and i go in usually the next day or that day they'll take me right away well that's good and do you go to uh do you go to indian clinic or indian health service Yes, I do, but not for my skin. I started to go to the Tulsa Dermatology Clinic and I continue to go there. But for other things, yes, I do go to the Indian Clinic in Pahuska, Pahuska, Oklahoma. For anything else I might have, the arthritis and different things, I would go to Pahuska. Do they have a dermatologist there? They do, but he's only there once in a while, not maybe once a week or once every other week. So they think that my skin is kind of bad and they would rather that, that I go to a dermatologist in Tulsa. Yeah. There's about six, sometimes eight doctors there that are working as dermatologists. So they know that I'm better off going there than I think in Pahuska, they could probably do some simple things but they think my skin is too bad to, for them to do in mm -hmm. Pahuska. No. but they're wonderful. They really are for everything else. If you break something, a break a toe or a finger or what, they're, you know, everything. They're wonderful about that. Good. That's did good. Did they refer you out to a dermatologist? They did at first, but then uh, I, I, just, I, went, just I go on my own go. now. Okay. They will refer a person out though. They would. They yes, would. They yeah. would. But it's a long wait and they have to go through a, the Indian hospital and go through a lot of people meetings and things. So I see it takes yeah. two. Yeah, sometimes there there isn't the time. That's why they need to get you in right away, right? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, Gina. Uh huh. And then Bobby, this this is your most recent watercolor portrait. Oh yeah, yes, it is. It's the most recent watercolor portrait, and um. And this was just kind of taken off of one of the uh, photographs that I had of my mom and just decided to um, have her look like she's in conversation with us, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like today. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby and I have a lot of fun. <laughs> That's how it should be, right? Research should be fun. Yeah, yeah, research should be <laughs> absolutely. That's good. Yeah, we had a I had a lot of fun with the uh, Shep Shep Wish pro, um, program and the fun with the kids um, for that too. In fact, I think yeah. we there as well, but indoor that was indoor that time. <laughs> so it's beautiful, and yeah, I do feel like she's talking to us. It'll be fun to see what the kids, the students say she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think that wraps up all of our pictures. Uh, Suzanne, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, Gina, but um, I just want to say that I'm happy with this program. Very happy. And 
I hope it helps a lot of children and adults to be to have a good time and be outside and have fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It helps me. I love being outside. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. And I love the sun too. Well, especially being in Arizona, we get a lot of sun here. Oh, yes. I would love to be there. <laughs> <laughs> And Bobby, is there anything else you wanted to share? Oh, no, I just want to say thank you very much. And I've enjoyed it. And I, I want to, I'm looking forward to continuing working with the YES program. It's, it's just been wonderful. And I can see that when we, when we do teach the Native American youth about the dangers of breast cancer and skin cancer, um, I could, in all the experiments that we've done with them, I could really see it in their face and their eyes that they really are learning from all that we're teaching. So it's been yeah. just a, an awesome, wonderful program. Thank you for having me in it. So. Yes, thank you for being in it. And thank you, Misha, for having us. I think yeah. we're going to move into comments and questions now. And I do see one question here that says, um, and from an anonymous attendee, apologies if this has already been addressed. Does Miss Bobby have any advice for us to advocate for getting our elders tested, addressing health concerns, or the importance of scans? Any advice for them? Um, I, I wonder if they're speaking of doing it through the native clinic. Um, the only advice I would have is to not get discouraged about it because I know sometimes like there can be issues that come up. I mean, whether it's transportation or not having the gas money, maybe to get somewhere but to never give up hope on that because I know they're expanding programs all over to help um, Native Americans like get to their doctor's appointments and things and to you know, maybe um, help with gas money or whatever a person may need because it's very important to, to go get tested. And especially like with skin cancer, if you, if you feel like something's out of place on your skin or looks raised or um, is raised or has any kind of a, a bump or anything, it definitely, definitely should, discoloration should be checked out. And I encourage them, you know, so much to go. Um, I hope that kind of answered it. Um, what, what else was the question asking about that? It says, does, does Miss Bobby have any advice for us to advocate for getting our elders tested? So... Um, or addressing health concerns. Oops, it just disappeared. I don't know what happened there. Um, well, that, that's what I would say is just like, don't give up hope on it. Just get the help to, to get there. Because I know a lot of times people won't bother. Like they'll be like, oh, I have this bump, but it's going to go away. I'm not going to bother with it. But that's really the opposite feeling that they should have. They should you know, want to get tested and try to get there no matter what way that they can. You know, and maybe teaching tools too, like sharing the Suzanne story or sharing other stories that have been with people with um, health problems, you know, just, you know, have them read through the stories and know how important it is, you know, to go get tested and everything. So I hope, I hope that helps. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments, reflections? Yeah, I can read a few that I see in the okay. chat here. So nine kids reminds me of my great grandma who had nine and adopted one more. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun and they help each other. <laughs> I know poor Bobby couldn't go out sometimes until she folded all the laundry. And <laughs> <laughs> but <Right. laughs> that's the way it was. <laughs> yeah, so we have another comment too. Thank you, Regina, for stating what should be the obvious, but you are correct. Color of our skin does not determine our ethnicity. As a group, we are just as likely to get cancer as anyone else. We must continue to be myth busters. Thank you from Martina. And then Martina also had a question, and that question is, did you get neuropathy from your treatment? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
I do have neuropathy. I, I'm not sure if I got it from that or not. I don't think so, but um, the last time I was at the dermatologist, they had to do an awful lot on my right arm. And it's still, it gets, my hand gets numb and my arm bothers me quite a bit. So you might be right. I don't know. I really don't, but I do have neuropathy. Thank you for asking. That's something to check into. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So we have another comment from someone on Facebook. Congratulations on graduating and for working on the YES program. Um, and I know that we are just about at time, but I did have one final question for everyone. Um, so June is Cancer Survivor Awareness Month and also ACAF Celebrate Indigenous Life Month. We are collecting messages of hope and wisdom for our cancer survivors and their relatives. So we would like to know what messages would you like to tell cancer survivors and relatives across Indian country? Have fun, <laughs> take care of your skin cancer and go out and do whatever you want to do, but be careful of the, of the sun and, and have a lot of fun. And I would like to tell them um, to keep teaching, you know, through their own experiences, through their own lives, whatever way they can get the message out there, just to keep teaching our youth so that, you know, they can pass it along. I would like to say that. Absolutely. And keep researching. Keep researching even just yourself, your own body, checking your body. Um, keep keep researching and like Bobby said, in the ways that we know how, whether it's, you know, qualitative research through interviews or art-based research, portraiture um, or quantitative research, you know, doing surveys and, and um, analyzing that data through statistical methods. Uh, just keep, keep learning so that we can all keep learning from each other. I forgot about that. We did a lot, quite a bit of that too, quantitative and qualitative research. <laughs> done all that <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you everyone yes thank you all so much for sharing i just want to kind of echo i really appreciate all of your smiles on here today we can definitely see all of the joy and i think that you all sharing that has just rippling out into Indian country and with our relatives. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for sharing your sacred stories and as well as your research and your, um, yeah, just your stories, your artwork, all of that is interconnected. I know that we as indigenous people know that our research, our art, our science is all interconnected and that we have capabilities, skills for all of those things. Um, and then I guess just to leave us with a few comments too, um, someone wrote, I really enjoyed listening to your experiences. Thank you for sharing your stories. Um, thank you for sharing and inviting us to listen. So we switch to all of our panelists as well as to our audience for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to ACAF. We are here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Misha, very much. Thank you. It's great getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Wado. Wado. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs>